Psychologist and relationship expert John Aiken has a new book out called Accidentally Single and he joins us all the way from across the ditch. Johnny, welcome to the show. Nice to have you back. It is great to be back. I've got a lot of fond memories of being on Good Morning a few years ago, so thank you so much for having me here. We've got a lot of fond memories of yes. you being on Good Morning as well. Yeah, we, we, we answered a lot of relationship questions over those, uh, those years, so it was great. So lots of experience being put into this book, Accidentally Single. Yeah. 15 mistakes that ruin romance. That's right. Well, I saw a lot of clients over the last 15 years, single people, mm. that were frustrated. They were wanting to meet their right partner, but at the same time, they were putting up obstacles unknowingly that held them back. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, let's write a book here that kind of slaps them in the face, wakes them up and says, take a look at the way you're running mm. your life right now. There could well be some key mistakes that you're making. It might be you that is making the mistakes yeah. as opposed to these men or these women yeah, who just aren't right. finding that's you. that's right. You know what I liked about the book? Uh, which I wonder how hard it was for you. You put a lot of your own personal stories and your personal romantic yeah. disaster stories. Yeah, that's right, because I wanted it to be human mm -hmm. and I wanted to be able to say to people, look, it doesn't matter if you're a psychologist or a, a florist, a personal trainer, uh, you can make these mistakes unknowingly. Mm. It was difficult to write that in the book, but at the same time, I think readers need to know that you're vulnerable and human. Um, and certainly Kelly found out a lot about my dating life by how reading she, this book. Now, how did she feel about that? Because I, I was wondering as I was reading about this woman at university was really attractive yeah, and yeah. fabulous. And yeah, well, no, <laughs> look, she, was, she, she found it funny, you know, because, okay. you know, uh, we can all crash and burn, you know, mm. when we think back on our dating days. And so she sort of uh, laughed a few times at some of the uh, mistakes that I made. There's obviously a lot, a lot more mistakes, but were these the most common mistakes, the 15 most common? Yeah, these were the ones that I kept hearing about time and time again. It might be that they're, you're only attracted to unavailable types, that mm. you're uh, too clingy, you're too bossy, too picky, uh, that you are too dramatic, love the spotlight so much that it all becomes about you and you push people away. Mm -hmm. Basic obstacles that essentially kept people from being able to take a date to a, you know, a more long-term relationship. But that's people's personality and that's probably uh, a way that they've lived and, and grown uh, since childhood. How do you change that? Yeah, well, you firstly, you've got to become aware of it. You know, um, yeah. the, the bottom line is we do a lot of this stuff without knowing it. So being aware of it, but then deciding, okay, if that's the pattern I've got, mm. for instance, being too bossy, then what you're going to do is break those patterns by doing things differently. So you would let your date influence you more. Mm. You would not be throwing out your opinions left, right and centre all the time organising them on the date and uh, giving them out instructions and lists, which people who mm. are bossy do this. But then some people might like that. How do you know? You know and, and the clingy thing. I just want to talk about the clingy thing. Like, I love it when people are clingy. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I like. Yeah. So, and I, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, look, I do. And what you'd have to be wary of there is if they're so clingy, they'll smother you. Mm. It's good to have someone that wants yep. to spend time mm. with you, that and write gets you. Nice texts oh, and, exactly. Mm. Uh, but uh, in the same breath, you've got to be able to go out with your girlfriend separately. Mm. Uh, you've got to have your separate interests and also be able to just some, spend some downtime apart so that you still keep it fresh. Yeah, but what if you, you're hearing, you know, you, you realise you've got these problems or issues, that you make these mistakes, and you hear them from your friends, but you're still not willing to change? Because that's mm -hmm. what happens. It, yeah. it has to be a change within yourself. Your friends can say, yeah, you've got this problem, you've got this problem, and you hear it time and time again, but you don't change it. That's exactly right. And, you know, the book will hopefully uh, slap, uh, slap a lot of the single people mm -hmm. out of that mindset, but there will be some that go, well, that's an interesting book, but it doesn't apply to me. And, and sometimes our friends are very good at getting us to think outside of ourselves mm. but books can also do that mm. same thing but the important part of all of that is that you do put your hand up so if you're sitting there now Valentine's Day is just gone and you're thinking <laughs> you know I'm alone what am I gonna do mm. rather than looking at external variables like the man drought mm. or that yeah, you know, other excuses other excuses people are intimidated by my success I hear that one a lot <laughs> or you know I'm <laughs> getting you know too old now uh, rather than looking at those variables start looking at yourself and saying, what can I change? I guess it's a process too, isn't it? First step is recognising recognizing and identifying it, it, and then just gradually working mm. through it. Maybe you have your 13 of these 15 mistakes you, you actually do when you're with somebody, just maybe one at a time and just a little bit at a time. You know, That's not, right. Don't try to do it all over That's one right. night. That's right, but make sure what you're remembering all the time is that if you're going to get some sort of different type mm. of relationship, you have to do things differently. Mm -hmm. And that means breaking patterns. I want to talk about this being too fussy problem because 
shouldn't we be fussy? Yeah, look, I mean... But that, you said that's one of the barriers, that, you know, we should be going for Mr Right now. Or whatever they yeah, look, say, I, they? I do think that it's important to have your preferences, your likes, your dislikes. Mm. Know what your ideal partner generally uh, looks like because, uh, you know, you need to be gravitating towards that mm. and be aware of the warning signs of those past relationships that you've had that don't work out. So it's important to understand that, but at the same time, you have those that are way too picky. They've got lists of 20 things on their criteria and that they're, they're perfectionistic, they're anxious. Mm. Now, if you're in that category, you've gone too far and that you need to actually ease up on some of those rules. But the I've thing got, is, I've got sorry. a friend, so no, I've got a friend, and I'm serious that she has a list. I mean, we all have a list. Curly chest hair is one of them. Yeah. You know, it, it sounds like Seinfeld, doesn't it? You know, she's got man hands. Or, you know, she... she what? You know, he has man episodes and he rules out women along the way every episode oh, because they do something very small but significant. And so he ends up always alone. I always say, though, if you, if you are... If, if you've got this list for somebody, you've got to be also prepared for, for what they've got Exactly, you've got to you be well. looking good too. If you're asking for all this, these types of things, you've actually got to be prepared to change and, and give a little as well on, on your side of... Yeah. Look, as that well is, in the relationship. That is true, and, mm. and your ability to compromise. I, I always think with relationships, th the, the package that the person comes with, you don't want to be sitting there going, now how can I change this mm, package that's here? That's right. What can I do that's going to make them better for me? Well, you're pushing Rather, people away by doing exactly. that. Exactly. You're much better off saying, you know what? Uh, they come with this package. Uh, how are we going to work in here? And mm. is this going to work? And certainly, I know with Kelly and I, you know, mm. she had lots of experiences before I met her, uh, you know, with her previous husband, and, you know, I needed to work in with with that mm. uh, you can't sort of say right now that you're with me we're going to put all that aside mm. doesn't work that way mm. we well, need to empower one another uh, at the end of the day you need to be growing together individually and together as a couple that's right mm. absolutely now speaking of the lovely Kelly yes, yes how many weeks to go on her pregnancy it's only five weeks to go so we're Dead. very very excited about uh, being first-time parents uh, I've been to all the antenatal classes Have and you? Uh, she's been reading up Are and nesting. <laughs> I think so. I mean, you know, we've got the cot all organised and the little. Um, you know, little soft toys are coming in left, right and centre. How about the weather? I hear it's really hot in Sydney. Very that, humid. That hard for her. We went out for a walk the other day. She said, John, I've got to tell you, I'm starting to waddle now. <laughs> and, uh, and then we got about 10 minutes into the walk and she says, we've got to catch a cab. I can't do mm, this. Mm. So uh, I'm sort of learning that this is, uh, you know, in that sort of humid weather, it is, it's, it's a, a hard ride. Mm. Mm. Oh, well, very exciting. Five more weeks to go. And congratulations. Accidentally Single Out Now. It's actually a really, really good book and really practical and gives lots of good advice. I'm going to be keeping my copy. Thanks so much for coming <laughs> Thank on you, the John. show. Thanks, John.